Hi everyone, welcome back. We're on rose number 18. Now I get a lot of requests. I go through and I read all the comments. You know, like I say to you guys, I like to hear the comments and the feedback. And if you take just a couple minutes to write a comment or to click that like button on the videos and stuff, those of you that are watching on the YouTube channel, it helps our distribution of our videos so much. I, if you just take a few moments to do that, you would really help us out and we'll continue on doing stuff like this, okay? Um, because YouTube broadcasts out more the videos out farther depending on how many people like them. So if you click like, then we get farther, brought, the, the more likes we get, the farther broadcast out. So take just a second to do that. So one of the requests that I've had in, actually from the very beginning of this series, is paint a red rose, paint a red rose, paint a red rose. And I paint a lot of red roses. Red roses are a little bit different. Um, and I don't want to get wrapped up into this rose, this rose, this rose. We're supposed to be practicing, like I, I say to you. But I'm going to show you a, a, a little bit different, just so some of you can, uh, can, you know, turn your studies towards that direction too as well and I understand you want to do that and I'll add more daisies and stuff like that later on but today let's concentrate on a red rose a pretty little red rose and then we'll add blossoms and other things onto one in a few more videos okay all right so this is one that I've done uh, and I paint all kinds of them from reds to to uh, um, real soft looks this this is a painting that uh, uh, I painted here and sold it. it this one took me just a little bit over an hour I do a lot of this with palette knife and stuff like that afterwards and I'll show you uh, this type of look it's a, it's a wonderful it's a wonderful look let me set that right up over here now to do a rose it's like that in a real deep red rich color I've only got really one red of my warms and then I put it in my cools. So I add one other color to the palette when I want to do them and that's the color called Brown Matter. Uh, it's a deeper color, richer color of, of the red here and uh, it got a little bit of a clog there. I don't want to, I've got some air in the tube, I don't want to spurt it all over the cameras here. So we'll put out a little bit of this Brown Matter here. Now, so when you look at that, it's a nice deep red but when you take it out like this, Look at the richness of that red that's in there. And that works wonderful here when I put it in conjunction with some of these reds or this nice warm naphthol red right here. Or I cool it right over here with some of my quinacridone. So you'll see it go warm, cool really easy. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, how do you... Uh, you know, how do you go about painting, you know, beautiful roses? You've got to start with beautiful pigments. You've got to start with the right type of pigments. Then it's no problem. Okay, then it's no problem. Okay, first thing we'll do is I'm just going to take some of this red with some of my green. And I'm going to push it right into my background to create some movement. I'm going to take a, a bit of extender in this as well. I'll push this into the background. I won't do exactly what I did on that other one up there. I don't like to do that and I don't like to try to recopy something I did before because every day I'm a different artist. I'm going to paint a little different than I did the day before. There are some things I can emulate on, especially if I make something really stiff, but if I'm painting something um, that is uh, you know, very casual, boy, that's hard. It's hard to copy that. So I'll put some movement back in here first. I'm going to, that isn't done. I'm going to adjust that movement. So I'm going to keep that brush over here this time. And let's go right into, um, we'll just push some of this green out of the way there for a second. Let's go right into to painting a red rose. I'm going to start it out with some brown matter and some cool here, some nice, deep, rich color. And I'm going to build this red, the beginning back red back here. Now, you know, if it's up to you whether you start to make it look a little bit pink or something like that, you know, that's up to you. But um, I'm going to cool this. I'm going to take this. Now, as I paint something in the back, I might tone it. So I'll add a little bit of green to it, maybe a little bit of light. You can see it go gray, quite a bit more gray. And when I paint red roses and combinations of red roses, I paint all different kinds of reds. The best thing to do is vary your reds. That's what's going to give you the prettiest look to your roses. Let's drop this one down. We'll increase this. We'll just concentrate on two roses on this one. So I have that, that color there. Now I want to shift my color. So I'm going to go more to the red violet and put a deep center in. You want to make the center on a red rose as dark as possible 
because that is a little thing of what we call in color theory called simultaneous contrast. And that will make the front of the rose look lighter, okay? So, and what you, it, depending upon, you know, how deep and rich you want this red, you don't want to, you know, a lot of people want a deep, rich red. Well, then you don't want to add too much white so that you go to a pink. So you want to keep your values pretty compressed. So what you want to do with a red rose is paint the lower part of the value scale. So here I'll put some deeper, darker red violet. I'm going to come up to my mid-tone, which is my brown matter. I'm going to push that in. And let those come together but this will give me a nice deeper darker push of my colors for my reds out here like that stuck my finger in my wet stuff there but I'm going to show you a little different way to figure that out now back here for this one I'm going to add a touch of green because this one I want to set back so it's not going to have the brilliance to it that the one up in the front will have here and then we'll take a little bit of this with just a touch a little bit of that brown matter, a touch of green, maybe a touch of white here. And we'll push that right. Nice, soft, more gray color here, okay? All right, so I'm going to rinse that grayness out of my brush a bit. Now, what we're going to do is start building the brightness of the rose that we want in the front. I'm going to step over here, take some of my nice, really warm, bright, it's a red-orange, but it's naphthol red light. This will come in and start to build the 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 light glowy part of the rose that you want to have. Now I haven't added, I don't add any white at this time because I want to stay out away from pink. The second that I start to add white, I'm going to start to get pink. So many times I would paint red roses and never go as, va as lighter than like a value four, which is this naphthol red light. But some of us like to get more lights into it, so we start adding reds. Now we can also add and when I do red roses, I like to put a little bit of orange in here as well. Now we tone this all down. Here you can see how that tones down a little bit of green. And we push that down here into this back one back here. So anything that I'm going to push into the background, I add a little bit of green to it. Okay. Now we can start shaping our rose. And to shape our rose, this is where I'll start adding some of my light color. Now, this is where also where I'll, I'll play between my light. So I like a, a nice light, uh, warm color here with just the naphthol red light and white. And then I like the naphthol red light and quinacridone and white, which is a little bit cooler. So you see one is a little warmer and one is a little bit cooler here. And this is what I can use to start building my petals here and push that into some of that red that's there. I can do smaller little chunks of this color out and around and kind of kind of start. To, I like to make small color marks. Like I might take a real cool right back here and strike in the cools. That gives you, what that does is it gives you a different red back there than you see here up into the front. And if you can get that kind of interest in, then what you do is you don't uh, have to use so much white. White is the killer of a red rose because it goes pink. But I don't I don't mind that as much as is is if if I have some nice, beautiful, rich reds. I don't mind a few pinks into my red roses because that naturally happens where the shine's going to be anyway. So here I'm going to take a little brown matter and lift back off so I can preserve that. So it's a it's kind of a a mixture here of, you know, where are you going to go light, where are you going to go cool, where are you going to put brown matter, brown matter and uh, brown matter here, and the quinacridone is beautiful to reshape your bowl here, push that color in, see that just gives, this sets pretty color, and you start, what you're doing is you're just slowly, and this is how I do it, I just slowly start to build the movement of the rose with the various light and dark tones here, but you have to add a few more reds to your palette to really get some beautiful reds, the pigments of it. You can't just mix that red because it is a primary. You know, the red is a primary. And you're going to have limitations on what you can and cannot do. So if I feel I get too light after I put that on, I might take a little cool color here and lift back on. 
depends on how deep you and rich you want your red roses here. Okay, let's take a bit of that. Come back through the, the back part of our rose right in here. Don't take out all the dark, but let's put a little, little bit of movement there for that uh, red rose. Let's take a little bit of this light red, a little pine green, a little burnt brown matter here. A little bit of that pine green is important because we want to keep this one more toned. Let's get a little bit of red violet in there, or excuse me, quinacridone in there. Gray it up. Gray that up. Keep it softer. Doesn't need to have too much there. Okay, pull that around a bit just to, but if you have a, if you have a softer bit of a gray, say back here, you know, softer bit of a gray red, back here like this, pull out a bit for that petal, um, that will make these reds look brighter. It's all, you know, painting a bouquet of beautiful red roses is really all about what we call simultaneous contrast. You know, you don't want to use your, you know, a lot of artists will use whites to get their contrast. No, you've got to start playing the rules of contrast. And as artists, those of you who study color theory, especially those studying color theory with me right now, you know there are eight rules, there are eight things that we do as artists to control contrast within a painting. And we want to stay away from value as much as possible because we start adding too much white, our roses will go to the pink side. So we've got to be careful with that. Let's put a little more red red right into that. See, so I can strike that light edge of the petal. I can, with the red roses and stuff, I'll use a lot of what I call a petal edging technique. So I may really define the petal more with a light color right on the edge of my brush and you know, use that to put like the little, the little edge of that petal. But then I'll go right back into my reds as I work the majority of that petal so that I don't get the whole rose pink. Okay, but it's up to you how light you make it. Okay, that's up to you. So here comes this color. We'll build this a little lighter. Let's put just a touch of our cool in there. Let's build just a bit more of that light. Let's get a nice quinacridone and brown matter stroke. See that beautiful red that's right there. That This brown matter is the beautiful red. And so if you're going to paint a lot of red roses, man, that's one that you need to really help shape them and get that rich red tone, deep rich red tone into your roses. Okay, so there's that. Let's go with a little bit of a petal edging here and just touch a few little edges. Now if it goes too pink like that, just take a little brown matter and lift off. Leave just the edge of it. See? So you can keep, you can preserve your red or if you want a little bit of coolness to that. Just to preserve that. So I will strike, I can strike a petal, say right across here like that. And then redress my brush. Let's go from a shadow to a cool from brown matter and quinacridone and push right up, taking out most of that light pink, leaving just a little bit. So I don't, so you see the petal there really clearly, but I don't lose my red. That's the whole ticket right there. See, so let's come back out here and we'll let just a bit more of this come out. And we'll go cooler as we go over here to this other side. I'll let that coolness come out there like that. That's kind of pretty. Little touches. Let's put just little touches of the, the lights here coming down that side. That's kind of pretty. And there, paint for the movement of it. We'll add a few more. Let's get a bit more of our naps all red. Few more little petal edges here, lights, light petal edges here that come through, join that up there. Maybe a, a little, we can go a little bit more pink, you know, how much you go is up to you. It's a contrast thing. How much do you do it? That's your call. You're the artist. I'm just showing you the technique 
And so I'll put color on, and then as I slowly evolve this rose, lighter and lighter here, I'll put the colors on, the reds on, and stuff like that there. And then if I feel like I'm going too pink, take some of that brown matter and stuff and lift off. So it preserves the body of that rose as the deeper, richer color, which comes from that brown matter, which is such a pretty color. Here, let's put a little stroke of that brown matter right in here. And see that darker, richer brown matter makes all of the, the pinks and stuff like that really come up as well. But I do like little touches of the, like the cornacridone coming up up in here, like this. You know, that heading back. I like touches of that quinacridone in here. Let's take a bigger, deeper spin of that red violet. Remember, we reset our center at any time to really give the, the look of the, the rose that we want to have. So you can see, you can get a lot of difference to your rose there. And I, you know, I wish I had a whole bunch of the boards I could show you so here under the camera when we had time. That, show you all the different types of red roses that I paint. I paint a lot of them because I've been painting for long years, and a lot of years, and it's just figuring out, now here I'll just tip the edge of it, just a little bit lighter pink, just tip the edge. So I don't get to destroy the red of the rose, but I still put on a nice, nice uh, um, petal edge. So you only need a little bit of pink on the petal edge, but I do so many different types of flowers and roses and stuff and um, some of it you have to rely purely on color theory okay it's not it's you have to have the right types of pigments working together like with the reds because to me the red is the most difficult of all the roses to paint and keep it as a red okay and so it uh, requires a lot of color theory your knowledge of the colors and the pigments to know what what pigment goes what and where, what and where. So here's my, I want to go down towards my bowl shadow. I would use my, my uh, deep, rich brown matter and cool it with my, this. now if I want more contrast, I could use a touch of this red violet in here and pull from the bottom, lifting off some of that lighter pink. And I preserve the, uh, that, you know, nice redness of the rose while um, also adding more color, more color interest to the rose here. So I'm just gonna, I'm, so now that you see that, I'm gonna lighten up just a few petals here and um, play these just a bit here. And so you see that, you can see how I'll paint something like that. So it's a kind of a pretty little, you can use the little edge of the light at any time to draw in and shape some of your petals and shape up your rose till you get a nice pleasing shape that you want. I love the petal edging shaping of it, but you only need a little tiny bit of the light. Okay, so there you got that. And uh, so, you know, when I when I do some of these, like I, I the one I showed you there, I'll take my brown matter and some of my green here and I'll lighten up here a bit. I'll create some of the beautiful grays here. I like the, the grays of the background, maybe a bit of yellow here. And <clears throat> as I apply some of this stuff, and I'll apply some of this, you know, with my knife. And I like those reds and stuff to come through here. And I'll push this in and out here, create the lost edges at the back edge of the rows there. Sometimes I'll put a little extender in there. But I'll work like backgrounds like this. I'll work quite a bit uh, with the knife. So the one I showed you here, I mean, the, the painting I did, I showed you at the beginning of the build of this uh, of this uh, particular one here, the red one I showed you. This is how I do it, back and forth, working the colors and the knife back and forth. You're an artist. You're constantly searching for ways to do stuff. I'll push in, clean up. I can negative paint right up. I can drag part of the, uh, the that edge of that knife right down in there and fracture the edge of that rose. There's just a thousand ways in which you can do stuff like this and make pretty, pretty nice, uh, you know, backgrounds and stuff like that. Sometimes I'll grab my bigger brush, 
We'll take some more green. Let's add a little green and yellow, a little bit of light here, and pull some of this back through into some of this area here. Pull that through like that. And see, as I'm working that, manipulating that background, see how the red rose is popping off. So it's, uh, I'm watching. Now, why, what, what's one of the reasons why it's popping off? Okay, um, why is it doing that? And those of you that are in color theory, that have studied color theory, you know the answer. I'm adding the complement of the red to the background, and that's lifting the, the, uh, the rose. And we'll drop this back. A little bit of pine green and red violet, nice contrasting. This uh, co this is the complement in contrast, but it's also in value here. So what it's going to do is my green and my red violet. It's cool, it's dark, but it's also going to uh, contrast the rose uh, because of the green and make the reds appear brighter. So I control a lot of the reds when you're in a red flower situation like this. To uh, I control a lot of the reds with my background. This is what makes the background is what makes the reds look red here. So yeah, a lot of different ways, really fun ways to play with it, and uh, you know, find some different looks and stuff like that. And you could use some negative painting to pull some of that back. You know, I mean, I create all different kinds of looks. We can uh, use this to uh, start some of the the uh, softer leaves here. Pull them in like that. Push pine green here and uh, burnt sienna. A little bit different green here. Those will really push the uh, the uh, <clears throat> the look of the red because they're complements to it. Put a bit of that reddish color tone in there as well, just to change that up. Use that to shape anything in the back of your flower. Be a red rose. The red roses, uh, to me, are, are some, though, that take a little bit longer to paint because you have to understand your color movement a little bit more. Um, and I think, I think what I'm going to do is push this up like that, get rid of that line, just a touch more of that line on that one. And, uh, yeah, lots of different ways. <laughs> lots of ways to do it. They're fu it's fun. And this is what I do. I, I paint lots of these and... Uh, to, you know, practice my colors and try different color schemes and relationships and, and stuff to see, you know, what I'm uh, doing is, you know, is that going to look okay or whatever. We can take some of this um, nice reds here, red, some of that red, some of this nice soft color. We can push that right back into here, into our backgrounds here to... Uh, make it uh, look like there's more going on. Remember, it's, that's part of the beauty of uh, this particular painting and this style. Let's get rid of that little edge on my knife here. And I'll push that right back into my backgrounds here and start to drag it like this as I start to get more paint into uh, my background. This is when it starts to get even prettier when I start to get some of this movement back up here. And I may go into my leaves or go into the, the edge of the rose or something like that a little bit because I don't paint, I don't avoid something. I just paint it. And if I need to go back and fix something, I'll go back and fix it. I'll go back and touch into it again. But I start to drag and build like this, these colors. This is the kind of the movement that I like to give, you know, some, some of my paintings, the colors. I mean, out there, sometimes I'll use my paper towel to, to manipulate edges and stuff like that. Different ways. Here, you know, push those around. I'm going to reset these leaves, so I'm going to put a little bit of this pink back up here. And uh, reset some of these colors right up here. 
Then I'll push them back in again. Just take some of this light color, push that back in. Push it around with your hand a bit. Here, push in and out. This is what gives you those nice, lovely broken edges and stuff like that, you know, to your uh, to your painting. Gives you that different look to your backgrounds. That's the prettiest part. You can drag some of that with your brush here, like that, to start manipulating it around. All different kinds of ways. Now you can paint the red roses like this on a solid background too. It doesn't hurt anything. But I like to manipulate, I like to really take my time and add a lot of interest to the background. That's what I did on this one here. See, that's what I did on this one here. I'm pulling those colors through and looking at those colors. You know, it, uh, it works a lot. Let's get back and reset some of my back edges here. Some of my, uh, some of my nice brown matter. Push that out. Now, now you got that nice loose edge back there. If you wanted to, um, you know, um, take and uh, and make that more translucent edge, you have some nice greens and other colors back there to work that into. Here, let's uh, take just a bit of my light. We'll work these petals in just a touch there that edge here just a bit of that that's good a little bit of cool love to reset those pigments up into there there's that cool let's let those colors work now let's just go real quickly reset some of those leaves and looks of those leaves there here, like this. Reset a few of them around. Let's make them a little darker over here. Add a little bit of the violets to it. Here. And <clears throat> a lot of times I will take a nice dark, and not only, you know, I don't always paint the leaves dark. I can paint the leaves light so I can push in some darker greens, pull those around like that, and then I can paint in a couple of uh, lighter leaves here up on top of those. As long as I don't go too much lighter, I can go a little bit lighter, but I don't want to go too much lighter with my color than the rose, because remember this is all about the rose, but you can uh, put a lighter leaf in here, and which lightens up the whole feeling of your composition. We can add a bit of that light up here like that into that one there and uh, maybe a bit of light here up onto there yours you can figure out you know what it is that you want to do I can use some um, let me wipe get a new paper towel here and we'll grab just a bit of the dark here pull that around and down a bit more of the dark pulling down colors of our of our greens here and use that for a little bit of shadow maybe a shadow vein line like that okay just real quick keep going keep going keep going don't play with it don't play with it all your tones will blend and gray out, especially because I'm working red and green. They're complements, so I can't paint it too much, see? Because I'm working complements here. Let's put just a few little lighter strokes of this coming down. Here like this. Maybe a few darker edges of a red right there but now you got a nice deep rich red rose okay nice deep rich red rose lots of ways to do them that's just one and manipulating the background a little bit but um, I'll show you some more and I'll show you some more pink ones and I'll show you some blossoms with them and stuff like that but to really get to them you got to get that extra pigment out there that brown matter and work that in there all right okay Let's continue on. I think we're on number 19 will be the next one. I'll see you over there. 